Tesla just dropped new information about the safety of full self-driving. As of today, drivers who use Tesla's autopilot technology are now 10 times safer than regular drivers. With over 1.6 billion cumulative miles driven in supervised FSD, they're now showing only one crash for every 6.88 million miles driven while on Tesla's FSD or autopilot. This is compared to drivers not using a Tesla or this technology who are seeing one crash for every 670,000 miles. Second, it looks like Waymo's robo-taxi service is expanding in both San Francisco and Los Angeles. You can now hail a robo-taxi ride from Waymo in San Francisco 24-7 in a service area of 55 square miles. That includes the 10 additional square miles they just added. Finally, we'll take a look at a report that is saying that the U.S. government is looking to ban Chinese software and self-driving. I've got Brian White with us. He's a host of his own YouTube channel. Amazing channel. Love him. Always watch him. He's at Futuraza on YouTube. Brian, thank you for joining me. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Herbert. This is, boy, I tell you, not a quiet week for news. I was uh, just sure this this would finally be the quiet week, and it has not happened. <laughs> well, FSD, full self-driving, of course, is the most important one. And uh, we've been waiting for Tesla to drop more information. It's not um yet the actual information i want to see which is you know um actually how much uh safer how many miles between intervention uh for fsd 12.5.1 but it's telling you safety is there 10 times safer than a human so let's uh, take a look at that um, report here so this is um a tesla executive omiad afshar saying that a uh, more than 1.6 billion cumulative miles have been driven with FSD supervised. I think they reported that number at the Q2 earnings report. On vehicle safety, below is the latest update from the past quarter we have just published. So it looks like that in Q2, Tesla recorded one crash for every 6.88 million miles driven in which drivers were using autopilot technology. For drivers who were not using, so this is Tesla, if you're still driving a Tesla but you don't turn on autopilot, whether on highway or city, we recorded one crash for every 1.45 million miles driven. So that is, uh, what is, I don't know, maybe a five times more safer than if you are uh, on a Tesla without that tech. But if you compare this to other cars, if it's not tech and in general as well, they see a normal driver will get a crash every 670,000 miles. So 6.8 million versus 670,000, that's already 10 times safer uh, number. This is the vehicle safety report that they just dropped. Uh, you know, Tesla vehicles are engineered to be the safest cars in the world. So there's all sorts of decisions they have to make from the design of their cars to the software we introduce. Um, looks like that, you know, Model S, 3, X, and Y have achieved among the lowest overall probability of injury of any vehicles. Um, it's a rigid fortified structure of the battery pack that's mounted to the car's floor, uh, large crumple zones, unique low center of gravity battery packs rarely incur serious damage in accidents and uh yeah What's your thoughts about so, this yeah yeah let's have a quick chat about that so the first thing is we've been saying this for years you and i and many others that once you're on full autonomy uh, even though it's not full, you're still supervising or it's beta or whatever it may have been along the way. It is safer because two minds are better than one and the car has a mind of its own. Uh, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I just realized it sounds terrible, but uh, it is doing your work for you and you are just paying attention to make sure it is doing it correctly. You said, well, you know, that's, oh, but, 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 uh, and then you say, well, wait a minute, if. Tesla's actually at 1.4 plus million miles between accidents, even with it turned off, then that just means cars have gotten safer. Well, yes, cars have, but Tesla's are those cars. So when you're looking at the total average, that's already being bumped up by Tesla's amazing numbers. And if you're looking at, uh, well, how, if it's not turned on, how does it do it? You've got good brakes. You've got good tires. You've got forward collision warning. You've got some active safety things where if it sees an accident, it might jam on the brakes for you. Uh, all of those things are going to reduce accidents, good visibility, uh, good, uh, cameras uh, to cover the areas that a human is not naturally good at seeing. There's just a lot of things built into the package so that even if you're that traditional driver who doesn't want to use uh, autopilot or FSD, you can still 
make it happen and uh, get get the safety you need. Um, well, my Mercedes has full, you know, has a forward collision warning, all that. Cause, great, does it? Because uh, I'd like to see those stats and Mercedes is not publishing them. Maybe they don't have the data. Maybe they don't know their actual incident rate, uh, but Tesla does and they publish it. So I don't see any route to legitimately punish the people who are actually gathering and publishing the data uh, while giving a pass to those who probably have the data and will not share it. Yeah, that's a very, very good point. I mean, uh, they don't have that data because they don't have connection. They don't have the information that they're tracking necessarily, but lots of great points you made there, Brian. So the, it's basically what the, the part of this report said is uh, active safety features come standard on all Tesla vehicles made after September 2014. If it's a, something to do with safety, they'll do an over the air update, make sure that it's part of it. It's standard. This is the love, the software that can add a layer of safety beyond the physical structure. And then they say, because every Tesla is connected, right? We're able to use the billions of miles of real world data uh, from the global feet, more than 9 billion. And then they can use that to find out all the different ways accidents happen. And then they use over the air software updates to introduce safety features and enhancements, uh, just like you're saying. So this is the report that they showed that the dark blue lines is Tesla vehicles using autopilot technology 6.88. Tesla vehicles who don't use that technology, but they're still Tesla vehicles. They're already safer than the, the United States average down here. So. You know, people say, oh, the biggest complaint is, oh, this is, you know, not really good data because when does Tesla consider an accident? It's within five seconds of an accident. So it, I've it, seen it was five, but I've also seen 10. But uh, yeah. is it five? They wrote well, down uh, in the report five. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is still uh, a substantial distance you're traveling. Uh, especially at highway speeds. If you're going 70 and it's five seconds, you're going a good, good yeah. distance. All right. Well, okay. We know how bad drivers are. So let's take a look at the DMV News Live um, X account who kind of shares how bad this is from the Howard County Police Department. Let's take a look at this video. Whoa. This is humans. <laughs> this is regular humans at the intersections. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh, I mean, he just, he just ran a red light here. Yeah. Another one. Oh my God. Ooh. They're just going to keep going. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I wanted to show this. I mean, we know how bad humans are, but it's amazing how people keep saying, oh my gosh, autopilot technology. How dare you test that? It's... <laughs> Don't you know how dangerous that is? Uh, dude, humans Distracted are... meat people are dangerous, <laughs> deadly. <laughs> They're worse. Ugh. You know what and, I mean? And like I that... knew from, yeah, I knew from watching that, that, that this was not going to show any actual collisions, but I can't help but feel every single time, oh, it, uh, that it's going to be a collision. That guy, look, oh, what are you... These are the compilation of near crashes yeah. in Howard County. Of course, there's... Well, we know there's a million, one point, what, six million crashes per year in the United States alone, 400,000 deaths. So I just don't understand that people say, how dare you test autopilot when you have a human supervising it? Because this is what we're trying to stop. So um, is Tesla's FSD already safer than a human? Let's take a look. Humans run red lights, Tesla FSD stops for them. Let's take a look at this video. <laughs> FSD stopped. Ooh. That guy Ooh. just kept going. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, and it's yellow. Uh, it's red. And none of this surprises me. I've driven enough miles to have seen a whole lot of these myself. So this is uh, Elon replying to that, saying FSD will be much safer than humans. Supervised, it already is. We know it is. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not doing a whole lot of supervision. Um, it does a lot of really interesting things now. Um, there's still some kinks to work out, but it is, there's, you know, I've, I, it still won't uh, recognize the no right turn on red. We've got to get that 
to recognize that sign. Um, but the big change I've seen on 12.5 is the way it handles construction zones. Uh, mm -hmm. Last night, I had to rush to the hardware store before it closed, and there's a whole bunch of goofy construction. And I was like, boy, I don't have time to play games, but I'm putting it in auto in FSD because I want to see what it does. And it it the lanes were so narrow and so full of cones. And because of the time of day, the cones were look like light bulbs because of the reflective tape. And it didn't see them as cones. It saw them as kind of like round blobs but it still took me out of the regular lane of travel through the cones flawlessly. And these are big steps. Well, that's an easy thing. It should handle that. Right. I agree, but it did, it did handle them. So it's getting there bit by bit. Yeah. Glad that you're testing it now. Let's take a look at what CERN Basher put together. He does fantastic work uh, looking at the details of what we just learned here. CERN Basher said Tesla's safest, safest vehicles on the planet. Let's take a look. So this is his table, the accident rate, uh, according to Tesla Q2 2024, the national average of 2022, you would get 1.49 accidents per 1 million miles. Um, that's 1.9 accidents for uh, if you live 90 years. Sounds small, mm -hmm. but it's a, t a it lot. It is. Yeah. It is small. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, but then if you are manly driven Tesla, just a regular Tesla alone, it's already looks like 50% safer, just a Tesla. You'll, uh, you know, just because of the, uh, the safety features they put into the car, both software and hardware. But if you are Tesla with autopilot, look at that drop to just 0.2 accidents per nine years. When you look at it in this perspective, it looks like it's solved. Uh, clearly it's not. But it's just, yeah. it really is 1.5 accidents for every 10 million miles. That's where we're at right now. Yes. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, and it's going to get better. I saw a post uh, from Paul Foss from Clean Technica this morning saying, yeah, but it, it looks like it's really flattening out. The amount of money that Tesla's spending on autonomy is, is still increasing dramatically while the safety is barely improving. And that's the problem is as you approach perfection, uh, we're, we're approaching light speed. And as you approach light speed, it takes exponentially more energy to get you a little bit faster because each nine from there costs that much more. Maybe that's the point we're at, but we don't have to get all the nines. We're not trying to get all the way to light speed. We're trying to get enough nines that it's indiscernible from light speed. And we're, we're right there now in terms of the end, but that's just in terms of crash. There's all the other little things getting it to go to switch from, uh, arriving at your destination to parking at your destination. That's not a big problem. That's something they'll be able to solve quite quickly. Getting it to understand signs. I don't know how much more difficult that is. I think it can already read the signs. They just haven't implemented it yet. The little things are going to be, yeah, a lot easier to handle than, then everything that's come before it, getting it to understand the world and interact with it in a comfortable, organic, safe way. Yeah, okay. there's two things we're talking about, right? There's one which is robo taxi, which is okay. I'm gonna not sleep in the car and let the car drive me. It needs to be a lot safer. That's not ready for robo taxi. But we're talking about just buying a Tesla and supervised FSD. Why won't you do that if it's already ten times safer doing that? So even if you never get to RoboTaxi, but you want a safe car, it says here, if you drive a Tesla with autopilot technology, your accident rate drops by 80% to only 1.5 accidents per 10 million miles or 0.2 accidents over your lifetime. You got eight cameras, you got an in-cabin camera that's looking at your attention and it'll flag you if you're looking away from your cell phone and all that. You've got the safety features all around the car. In other words, if you don't drive a Tesla with autopilot technology, you're 10 times more likely to have an accident. Uh, why would you take that risk? Why would you put your family at risk, especially now that the cost of a Tesla is on par with or cheaper than many ICE vehicles? So this is what they need to be marketing. This is the safest vehicle on, on earth right now. It's only going to get better from here. And I think the answer is because some people don't think about it that way. Why would you... Uh drive drunk or distracted with your family. Um, maybe, maybe people don't like their family. No, I don't think that's it. Yeah. I think it's that, yeah, people, people do irrational things. Very smart people do some very dumb things that if you zoom out and look at it, you go, what, 
What are you doing, man? That doesn't make any sense. I thought, I thought more of you. Uh, there are, are also companies that make cars now that f have fake shifter noises because I just want my car to feel like a car. Is that really? I had a friend who's, uh, who inherited a bunch of money and wanted a new car and I, and she wanted a convertible. I said, get the hard top Mercedes. That's exactly what you want because she wanted a convertible, but she doesn't like the floppy canvas of a soft top. And she goes, well, I can't get it. It's not available in a stick. I said, you don't need it. What do you need a stick? Well, I need to know it's shifting at the right times. I go, what are you? So she test drove it, loved it, bought it. But then I went for a ride with her once and I found that she was still shifting it manually. She was still going through the, I was like, what are you? Okay. Hey, if, that's what makes you, do. if that's what makes you happy. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at the other news here. Waymo is expanding their robo taxi service area in San Francisco and Los Angeles. The company is looking to add more customers to its burgeoning, burgeoning driverless <laughs> car business. Burgeoning. Burgeoning. Is it? Is it burgeoning? It's, it is. It's, it's, it sounds I mean, good, but then you'll find out it's... An 8% increases. It's yeah, 10 miles, ahead. square miles that they added, so it's like a okay. tiny little area. But here's what a Waymo looks like. Massive, massive LiDAR at the top. All <laughs> Subtle, elegant, <laughs> indiscernible from factory. It looks um, good. But they're out there, and they're you know operating two major cities. The RoboTaxi company announced today's growing service areas in both San Fran and Los Angeles. Uh, it says Waymo service is expand in San Francisco, extending south of the city into south into the to cover Daly City, Broadmoor, and Colma. A total ten additional square miles for a total fifty five square miles. The company recently got rid of its waiting list in San Fran, so twenty four seven you can order order a robo taxi. And uh, this is the blue, the dark blue is what they already covered, and then now they're saying, hey, we're going to cover the Daly City too. So great. That is great, and. It's disappointing. I, I saw a report, I want to say early this year, that saying that we are going to be expanding it massively yeah. from just the tip of San Francisco, just the tip, all the way in, like spreading way out in way south of it. And it did not, I, I was just sure that that had already happened, but I guess it makes sense that it hasn't. Otherwise, we would have seen a lot more footage of it. Expanding is hard when you have to have all these mechanical Turks following it behind the scenes. And we still don't know how much intervention is required. Teleoperation. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's the what they don't share is that there's people in the background sure. playing it like a video game. So when you get into these cars, you go, oh, my God, there's a robo taxi. There's nobody here. Oh, my God. But actually, there's yeah. a human watching it and uh, following along. Um, and that gives me a lot of pause because there were videos I watched from channels I trust where they said, I'm going to go ride a, a Waymo yeah. for the first time. And it's set up. It's all set up. They know where he's getting on. They know, yeah. you know that drive is supervised. Yeah. Somebody's joystick playing it. So let's take a yes. look at, um, you know, uh, Los Angeles. So, you know, when you were saying, why did it take, it's taken them so long? They don't expand fast enough. It's because even in Los Angeles, they can't even get to 24-7 yet. So they're doing 24-7, and there's a waiting list in Los Angeles versus, okay, San Fran. They, they got that team, because it's a huge team that they have to have. So in Los Angeles, the company's wait list is still in effect. Okay, they're expanding into several new neighborhoods, Marina del Rey, Mar Vista, and Play, Playa Vista. And they're also adding Hollywood, Chinatown, and Westwood. So they started testing the waters for Los Angeles in the fall of 2023. The service went live in March 2024. Uh, that's a few months ago in April. The company started charging customers for trips. Waymo also operates a waitlisted robotaxi service in Austin. So this is uh, Los Angeles. The dark blue is what they currently do. And now they're going to add Hollywood, Chinatown, Mar Vista, this whole Marina del Rey. So now you'll be able to take a ride anywhere here. I mean, great. Yeah. And so uh, Waymo got an additional $5 billion from Google Alphabet company, the parent company of Google. Uh, should, that should help it grow over the next few years. We don't know exactly how much revenue Waymo brings in for Alphabet, nor how much it loses. Uh, this is sort of all hidden. Waymo most recently delivered $365 million in quarterly revenue, up from two eighty five dollars a year ago. But the unit's losses widened to $1.13 billion from eight hundred thirteen dollars in the second quarter. They're losing a billion dollars per year, per quarter. That's in 2023. So if you expand it to all these things, you're just basically losing more. And they're not cheap rides. They're, yeah. 
You're not saving money by not having a driver, apparently. Okay, well, you know, I guess our point is that it's great that Waymo and Cruz and uh, the Chinese are out there, but people need to d delve closer. Like I had this guy say, don't you know that Mercedes got approval in China for L4? <laughs> yes. I got that comment too. Yeah, we great. know. Now, now what know. are they going to do with it? How? It's just an <laughs> approval, weird. but number one and two, it's like, okay, tell us the, tell us the details. Like uh, yeah. how it can only go 30 miles an hour. It can only be done if it's following a lead car. You have to turn it off if it's not. But that would It can be only be four. done in certain weather conditions, certain times mm -hmm. of day. So all of a sudden, it's like it's like cruise control. <laughs> yes, right. It's traffic jam assist. And and my there, like you said, there's too many questions surrounding this. My question is: uh, Is this the same system they're using in the U.S.? It can't be. It cannot be, or it's not level four. If it's not that, what is it? Is it the same software but running with more compute? What? There's just two. Is it somebody else? Did you partner with a Chinese firm and you're just using their software? Maybe that's it. Uh, there's too many questions, and mm. I'd be very curious to see it in in application. Yeah. So my point is, okay, yes, these guys are out there. Please dive deeper. Understand what it is. Like people don't realize there is teleoperation. Um, so you know you really don't know yet. Okay. So this is. Um, information that's about to come a report is saying that the united states government is may start may put in a uh, regulations to ban chinese software in self-driving connected vehicles um, so the biden administration expected to propose such rules in the coming weeks this is a report from reuters sources brief on the matter the u.s commerce department is looking to propose banning chinese software in autonomous and connected vehicles the rule would ban any Chinese software in the U.S. in U.S. vehicles with level three or higher autonomous capabilities, effectively banning self-driving tests for companies from China. Level three autonomous driving would allow drivers to take their focus off the road, even perform other activities. Uh, also say the rule would require automakers and suppliers to confirm to regulators that their connected vehicle and level three software platforms weren't developed in foreign entity of concern such as China. So, yeah. I mean, it's you know, crazy. Uh, it's crazy. crazy. I mean, I can well, understand it. Why, I understand it, it, but this doesn't feel like uh, a national security issue. It feels like protectionism again. The 28% import tariffs were already keeping Chinese cars out. The 100% will definitely keep Chinese cars out. And then this is saying, great, now you can import a Chinese car. But it is going to cost double at a minimum. And then on top of that, it cannot have any kind of autonomy unless it's U.S. autonomy, which currently nobody is licensing because everyone's building it themselves. This is, you know, it maybe it would be easier to make friends with China than allow them to sell 50% of the things sold in the US, maybe 80% of the things sold in the US and keep them and, and still consider them our enemy. Um, it's just the whole thing is just the anti China sentiment is just very strong. And I don't always understand it. So the concern, I think this is all very good news for Tesla. So it looks like that if you are a car maker, that's not Tesla, uh, or yeah, a car maker in the US, you have to figure out your solution for yourself. You can't partner with a Chinese, right? And then if your Tesla Chinese government allows you to go there, maybe then they'll put regulations to stop any other car maker from the US to be able to do the same thing. And, and that's absolutely what will happen. And this is, this is people's lives we're talking about. This is safety. This is literally yeah. a life and death situation. And we're playing politics with it. And I, I don't know. I don't, do much politics so maybe i don't understand it it just feels um it just feels counterproductive to me all right well that's news and then the other one that just announced this morning tesla said that tesla vehicles cost the least to maintain per consumer reports tesla accounts uh, sent that out so i don't know if you can see this table let me get in closer Cheapest brands to maintain long term to better understand how costs increase over time and differ by brand. It's in its 2023 annual auto survey. Consumer Reports asked members how much they paid out of. Oh my God, the survey for maintenance and repairs during the previous 12 months. The years below refer to their age of vehicles. So it looks like that if you're a Tesla owner, one to five years, 580 bucks. That's already more than what I've ever spent for my five year cost. Did you get tires? 
No. No tires, oh. no brakes. Wow. I mean. I am at $3 now. <laughs> I did have to buy windshield washer fluid. And yeah, I'm I know, did say. deeply up deeply upset by that three dollar expense yeah. it's i so in california recently i met a gentleman who in 2016 17 went out and test drove a model uh, a tesla and he went back to work and his job was he worked in a repair center uh fixing volvos and he stood there for a minute and so he started grabbing all of the closed invoices from the week and looking at them and saying would the would a tesla have come in for this and he's like exhaust manifold no no uh spark plugs no and he's no. just going through it through it through it and he's like we've got four left at the end of the week that we would have done because they were suspension type things he goes uh this car is coming and we're going to be out of business because these cars don't have these yeah. problems i tell you these numbers look really high for tesla and really low yeah. for everyone else i mean i've owned a volvo mm -hmm. a toyota uh, a BMW, I've owned a Hyundai, uh, a, a Nissan, I mean, I've owned a, uh, an Acura mm. and, uh, you know, I was Jeep. ready to disagree with you, but my Nissan costs over six years was pretty close to that. I mean, I had motor mounts I had to replace, which is a no. pretty weird thing on a minivan. You, no, you, I did. I had to, I, I mean, so I would agree that that 4,400 is about right. I did have to do brakes. I did have to do tires. I had to do so many oil changes. Uh, and yeah, it's crazy to think about. I'm, I'm at about 20,000 miles now, which means if this was a gas car, I'd be on my third to fifth oil change and forget the, the 50 bucks a pop that we're talking. It's the time. I don't have the hours to it's spend. Way more than 50 bucks. You know, the business model of Tesla is to sell the car and, and make it, um, their goal is to sell you more cars. And so the cost of that, that's their margin. They, they don't, they're already stated that they're not trying to make money on the service and the service is a, they'll sell it to you basically a cost, whatever it takes. These other guys, it's their goal. You walk into, as soon as you walk into any garage out there, guess what? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> whatever you want. Here's the bill. Yeah. Okay, I'll yeah. take it. Whatever they say, They're, that's their business model. So, but yes. for both the automaker and the service, uh, the dealership. So, okay. Thank you so much, okay. Brian. This is uh, Tesla's are the safest cars. More and more data is being uh, released. And this is just the beginning. So even without RoboTaxi yet, Tesla is getting safer and safer, and um, it's going to be much more, you know, the ride is going to be much more pleasant as well. So eventually people will start realizing this is a big deal. Thank you, Brian. Check him out on his YouTube channel, Futuraza. I saw that you uh, posted what um, your your panel that you hosted at the uh, X Takeover event, and then, um, yeah, you've been doing a number of interviews as well. And you've traveled, so you have a lot I travel of a lot. people that you interview and no one else gets access to. Secret information. Thank you so much, Brian. Follow him on YouTube. Talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.